Hello, it is so good to see you. This is Thursday night, January 13th. How in the world can this month be going by so fast? But it is. <laughs> it is so good to see all of you. And um, I've made some progress on this. I have been very busy these last couple days, and I'm really tickled with the progress I've made. Um, firstly, I did a customer quilt, and it came out really, really cute. And you know what? I haven't done a quilt for a customer in a long time. In fact, for me, this was kind of like a favor for Mildred. But I enjoyed it, so I think I'm going to take some limited customer quilts again. For one thing, I'm better at quilting than I used to be, and I have fully learned the quirks of my machine so I can handle it better. But it was fun, and uh, so I got that done. So it's been a busy couple days. It is good to see Marsha and Polly and Laura. Hi, sweeties. And everybody else who's out there, because I know that some people are shy about saying hi, and that's okay. But anyway, we're getting ready for a great big snowstorm, maybe? And like most of the Middle and Northeast, and even a little bit of us Southerners. So it'll be curious to see. Um, sure, what weight thread? It was probably a 50. and. Um, and if you have a 40, all the better, all the better. So um, I liked it to show, and I liked, I, I think I used a double layer of polyester batting because I wanted it to puff up for me. It makes it easier to paint, and it makes it prettier when it's painted. Here's what I have so far. And if I were... Get the snow shovel. Oh, I know. Boy, it's going to be something. But if I had one complaint about this, I would say that I'm not sure. Everything seems pretty intense. Even though I aim for light and dark, I'm not getting the difference in the value. So, oh, thank you, sweetie. Thank you. Hi, Angela Adele. So good to see you. Jody is here. Annette Parsons is back. Hi, sweetie. Debbie's here. Boy, everybody just piled in. It is so good to see you. But I'm a little worried because there doesn't, like these red leaves that I just got through painting, they're not showing as much of an ombre as I wanted. Part of that is due to the metallics, but part of it is this is not an expensive set of paints, although it's not cheap, but it's not expensive, and they just don't seem to have the range of values. But on the plus for this, they give you a metallic white. Make sure you keep that lid pushed down. They give you a metallic black. So, I went back to some of the, the this, this one and this one, and I added white to the light to make it brighter. When I wanted to get four, a range of four reds, I went in with the black and a little orange because I noticed that I, the red is not a red. It's a Julie Pinky red. So, you know, if you buy one set of paints and you don't mix your own, you kind of got to work with what they've got. And, but I did want a more red and it felt more blue red. So I went in and added some orange to try to bring that up. And now that I'm looking at it in the camera, because sometimes it helps me to hold it up to the camera and then look because it gives me an idea of what am I really doing. But I'm seeing four, I think I'm seeing the four shades now. Do you think you see four distinct red shades? Because if not, I tell you what I'll do. If not, I'll go back in and I'll touch it up. 
Ah, yeah. Yeah, see, that's what I was wondering, because that it, it just... And when I added some black to the darker red, it almost wanted to go brown. Like, whoa! So, anyway. All right. So, I kept the paints in the in the tin in case I was going to lighten up one of the shades. But I'm thinking for right now, I'm going to hold off. They do change as they dry. And uh, be prepared when you buy any kind of paints, mix them to make you happy. Like I am going to want to outline this purple with a nice bold yellow. Well, the kit only comes with gold. I don't want gold. I want yellow. So I went over and got my yellow paints. And you notice I got them pretty bold because by the time I mix them, I have to mix them with some white to make them look a little metallic. So I got almost a dark yellow. So by the time I mix it with a little bit of white to add the metallic, then I think it'll be pretty good. You found a pattern you like. It. I am loving doing this. I'm loving it. And this, I'm going to, I think over the winter, you know, sometimes you like different projects at different times. But this is fun, and it gives me a change of pace. So I'm very happy with it. I really, it looks... Debbie says it looks, what is, hmm, I'm, I'm not sure one of the words. Looks R-O-O-Y to you. So, but I have to be honest. I think, you know, yes, it took me a little while to do the quilting. You know, you have to draw it, then you quilt it so that you have the lines that hold the paint in and, and mark the place. And another thing, if you have a skewer, a wooden skewer, any, oh, rosy. Yeah, it does look kind of rosy, doesn't it? Um, if you have a wooden skewer, keep one handy because, like, for this end right there, because if you get paint on your threads, then just take this, rub it on the threads. It pulls the paint off. You clean it and keep on going. So now, oh, before I get ready to go paint. Yeah, all of my, my palette looks rosy, doesn't it? And this is the red that I added some yellow to to try to bring up. Even I in, it went back in with some orange to try to bring it up. That's not red to me. <laughs> but anyway. Um, but this time I'm doing the metallic paints, which I really like. But they tend to kind of come out a little flat. I mean, they don't show the different shading as much because they're shiny. So keep that in mind. My next one, I may just do regular acrylic paints. Um, touch maybe do, I don't know. I'll see. I love the metallic because you know me. I like the bling, and it's never enough bling for me. So I like that, but I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to see before I start painting on this. This may be a shorter show tonight too. I'm worn out <laughs> after getting the um, quilt ready, and the woman came to pick it up today, and. I have been trying to decide if I'm going to do the Myrtle Beach thing, and I'm nervous about that, and I cut out. Oh, I know what I wanted to tell you. I cut out the polyester dupioni that I got that I'm going to work on the Alex Anderson um, hand embroidery. So I cut that out, and one thing I noticed, she mentioned if you use real soup dupe silk, if you use real silk, not soup, silk, do peony, that it frays easily. So have some. One of the things that I really love is fray check. This is super stuff. Then I also have a tube of June Taylor 
and it's a type of fray check. You know, anything that kind of binds. Hi, Miss Carol. Anything that kind of binds the fibers together. You can also um, use some white glue if you don't have any of these handy. You can also um, zigzag it right away. But the main reason I wanted to tell you about cutting up the polyester dupionis, you know that we like doing, on Thursday nights, we're all about art quilts and landscapes. And one of the things I enjoy is adding fibers to my landscape quilts or my art quilts. In fact, Polly, I love that Polly put cheesecloth for her cloud. And what a great idea. And that is a perfect, perfect adaptation of how to take your creativity and put it into action. So when I was looking at all these threads coming off that dupioni, I was grabbing them up to throw them away and I went, wait, that's fiber. And we're always looking for fiber. In fact, you can buy little bags of fiber, which is the threads that have come off fabric when they've been cut. So I just wanted to tell you, if you have any of the silk dupioni or polyester and you end up with little scraps, especially long strips, pull them apart. It's a lot of fun. Pull them apart into scraps and, I um, mean, you know, threads. And then when you need a bundle for a tree. Hi, Vicky. Oh, he's trying to watch some TV. Okay. All right. Well, it's good to see you, Miss Vicky. You're a sweetheart and take good care. Okay. Take great care. Thanks for just stopping to say hi. So, um, but I now have a baggie as I'm cutting the fabric and these, and these threads are coming off. I'm putting them into a baggie, uh, a, you know, a little sandwich baggie. And then that will go into my, I have one of those three drawer, ch drawer chests where I keep all my different yarns and any fiber that I might use for a quilt. So don't, you know, I, all of a sudden I'm trying to throw things away and going, wait a minute. This is great fiber. In fact, you know, I should have asked Jenny Byer back when she had her on-site shop. Some of the times I went in there, I should have asked, can I have the threads that come off your fabric? Because remember, she was a terror of fabric. And it was, you'd look behind their cutting area, and there's all these threads. And oh, they were so pretty. But anyway, okay, so I just want to tell you, look for fibers anywhere. Some of these pesky, in fact, ooh, LeMay's, oh, do they want to shred. Save them. That is wonderful. You know, people spend money to buy this stuff. So if you use, any, if any of you use silk or whatever dupioni to do this, Alex Anderson, save your scraps. All right, let's get set up over here, and I will... Oh, isn't that sweet? Uh, so I'm going to come over here and let us, let me get this tightened down really good. I'm going to be moving to do green. The next color that I want to do is green. And remember last week I was telling you I was worried about spilling paint or flicking paint or whatever well, guess what I found? This was in the trash can, so I cut a hole the size of what I'm working on. Ta-da! So, okay. Now, I'm not sure. Let me... Whoops. No, I don't see it. Oh, well. I must have put it somewhere. I won't use it then. I was going to ask if the light would help. But I can't find my remote. All right, so I'm going to work with greens. Let, since I didn't, the one good thing about these plastic little paint palettes is all you have to do is go to the sink, put warm water in them, rinse them right out. They are wonderful. So any of that plastic, the acrylics do not stick to. 
I'm looking for a paper towel. Be right back. Ugh. Uh, well, I'll use a tissue. Okay. And don't worry, this is just old paint that's on this side of the plastic. It's not going to hurt. Oh, that's a good idea. Use clips. I have some of those upstairs. I need to bring them down here because this is, I, there have often been opportunities that I should be using them. Okay. Now. All right. Uh, let's, I'm going to look at greens. All right. Here are the greens that came with the kit. This is very aqua, so I'm a little worried about this. Okay, Vicki, you sweetie. Yeah, masking tape will work too. Good one. So what I'm going to do is the first thing I like to do is here is some of the medium. And I'm going to, I'll use these. One, two, three. I only need three colors, so I'll put some medium in three of these little palettes. So, and I'm not going to use too much. I, I'm going to do more than I did earlier, but not as earlier today, but not as much. All right. Now, got my water for my paint brushes. I've got black and white, just in case I can use these to help. All right. Now, in this one, I use, I, I go, same as, as here. I went dark to light. I'm going to do dark to light. Because you, I have found, by way, way of Jenny Byer, that if you put the darkest dark and the lightest light beside each other, guess what? They will play nicely with each other. All right. This is going to be my second green. So I'm going to, whoops, I'll put it in this place. Earlier, whoops, I forgot I hadn't opened this yet. Um, but put, ah, this one barely closed. Okay, um, earlier I got my paint palettes a little bit mixed up with um, which way I put the colors, and I started to paint them the wrong direction. So I am going to correct that now with you and put them in the right order. So the medium... Green is going to go right here, and I put an equal amount of the medium green. I put an equal amount to the amount of liquid fabric medium, okay? Okay, let me move this a little closer over here for y'all to see, okay? Now, all right. So now, look, I'm going to move this back just a little. So I'm going to use a good mixing brush. I had one earlier that would have worked really well. I'm not, I tell you what, I'll use this paint stick. And I'm going to mix my green. The medium green is how I will base. Let me move it closer. The medium green is what I'm going to use to judge the dark green and the light green. They have to relate to each other to get the full range. And I like that green. I think that's a very good medium green. Okay. Very good. All right. So now that I like that, I think I should not use this one. I'm too worried that since it's an aqua, which means it has blue in it, and I want to make this a pale aqua, I better stay away from that. So what I'm going to do is go back to my medium green, 
and I'm going to put a good amount of medium green in this. And I'm going to put a little bit from my lighter green because I'm going to show you what I do with that. All right. So I put it in my dark green and my light green. And for the dark green, I'm going to come in here with the black paint. And I'm going to put some black in it. Let's see how it goes. I'm not sure if I'm going to add more. Then for my light green, I'm going to come in here and add some lime to the light green. Okay? I love the consistency of these paints. It's really nice. They're nice and thick so that then once you mix them, once you mix them, in fact, let me bring over my light. Yeah, you'll be able to see better now. Okay, so here is the darker green. Let's see how it is working. I'm, well, it's doing pretty good. I like the other paint palette better because it has deeper wells. So... Because I get kind of wild when I am mixing paint. Huh. I think I think it's working pretty good. I think that'll give a nice contrast. Okay. Let me wipe off my little stir stick. And don't forget, you have pinky red. Don't forget, um, if you have questions, you need to ask me a question. Try to type it in all caps, and I'll try to look often to see. But if any of you are working on this project, please send me photos if you'd like that I can use and show everyone. All right, so now I've got the light one, and I've got the medium and the dark. Let's see how they look. I think that might work. Let me do one little thing, okay? I'm going to take a little bit of the white paint and put it in the light. And what I like about having these whites and blacks is they're also metallic. So they'll give you that shimmer. Whoops, I forgot. Okay. I'm going to put a touch of white in this. What I have found with doing this painting is you have to make the differences a little more exaggerated to really have it show as like an ombre type of paint. All right. And make sure it really gets mixed up because sometimes it'll just leave streaks and you think you've mixed it and you haven't fully mixed it. All righty. So now I think that's better. I want it a little more obvious. And I'm pushing the paint aside to see if there are any more streaks of white. And it looks thoroughly mixed. So there is my dark, my medium, and my light. Okay. So now let me grab another tissue here. All right, I need to get some more paper towels here. All right, so now I have found, oh, well, now we're working on slightly bigger flowers. Let me find a little bit bigger paintbrush. I was doing the top petals with this tiny thin one because they were pretty small. And... But how are y'all doing? Are you getting ready? Any of you getting ready for snow? Because I tell you, some of us are going to get really hit. Be careful where you put your paint tray. Make sure it's reasonably flat. I'm going to put it right here because I know I can cover any mistakes and it's right near, right here with me. So I'm going to start with the dark green. Mm, this one's not fully mixed. 
Let me make sure it's, I've got it mixed. Oh, there we go. Okay. So since that's a, a bit of a small area, I'm going to go back to the smaller brush. You would be surprised. But the thing is, I don't want to use a big brush because it's so tough to make to make it fit inside the line. And I'm trying very careful not to have to do much in the way of touching up. And I have found, I had planned on taking out any little double lines or boo-boos that I made, but you can paint right over them. So that will save you some time. Just make sure that you see which line is the one you should paint right up to. And... I'm, I'm absolutely loving painting this. So now I'm thinking, oh, what kind of other things can I do? And it's very relaxing. Earlier today when I was trying to finish that quilt and the woman came to the door and the dogs were barking and Mark was on his computer with a business meeting, I was a little stressed. And then when I had a chance to sit down and just paint this, it really relaxed me. Okay. So now, while I'm painting, I'll definitely check to see if you have any questions. But I wanted to tell you that with all of this snow happening, I was trying to think that what is going to be, because this will probably be our last painting session with this. And this was a lot of fun, and you can still do yours and send me photos. But I'm pretty much going to have this done the next between tonight and the next time I sit down to paint. And don't forget, I will take a piece of toweling or um, muslin, lay it on top, and just press down the iron. Not hard. You just want to get the heat on this paint once it's fully, fully dry. Get the heat on the paint, and that will set it. So, and make sure, too, since this is not flat fabric, sometimes you have to turn it around and look at it from a different angle to make sure you've gotten completely in the little troughs. Because I worry so much about, I worry so much about getting the paint on the thread that sometimes I stay a little too far away from. Whoops, let me. I'm going to zoom in just a little so you can see it. All right. So now I was thinking, as I was thinking, I was thinking about what are we going to do for our next project. And I came up with an idea. Since so many of us are going to have a mess of snow, how about we do a landscape? Whatever, we'll find a design, we'll do a landscape that highlights snow. Because you know what? It's tricky sometimes. It sometimes is easy to do a landscape with snow, and it can be tricky because everyone thinks, oh, if I want to do snow, get out my white fabrics. But actually, there are more light, light, light blues and light, light, light grays in snow than white. So... I ha how what do you think that we do a landscape with snow? Helen Garden quilts. I'm going to I am going to check. Oh, and don't forget that this Saturday, day after tomorrow, we're going to have a jitsi, but first, we're all going to go. In fact, um Miss Carol, would you type a link to your YouTube show this Saturday morning, and if you would do that, please, since I'm painting, if you would type a little link to your YouTube, then people can come and 
watch and learn how you make your wonderful hand embroidered scrolls. So what we've decided to do is we've decided to make our Jitsi in the afternoon so that we can all be there for Miss Carol's YouTube teaching. She's going to be teaching Saturday Live. I think it was 9 to 11. So I think um, I, we're all going to go over there first. And then we'll do a Jitsi. And that way, if you have any further questions and stuff, we can try to help you answer them. But um, we're all excited because Carol does beautiful, beautiful work. Her scrolls are like a journal. And they're just beautiful. And I, when we found out that she is actually teaching them on YouTube... We jumped at the chance to learn how she does it. Very, very talented woman. So make sure you mark it down. And I do believe that her time zone is Eastern. So those of you who are Central or West Coast or whatever, adjust accordingly. Now, let's say you don't have time Saturday morning to do this. Well, please know that it will be up after that. The only reason we like to tell you about doing it live is so if you have any questions, you can ask her while, while she is doing the YouTube. I think she does them live. If not, I uh, can you make... Oh, absolutely. And I might keep you as... Um, uh, <laughs> Better watch out. You might stay one. <laughs> okay, let's see. There we go. Yay. All right. I did it, sweetie. So hopefully now you can, It's although it's not lit up, but I hope, whoops. Yes, you are live. Okay. Okay, let's see. Because I, I was trying, oh, yeah, it says you're a moderator. All right. Um. Because when I watched it, we had talked about it on Sunday's show. So I got off the show and went and watched yours. And it was great. So the only thing I'd like is that we'd love to see your face a little. Just to put the person together with that voice. But you did a really good job. And oh, I love your work. You're very talented. All right. So now I've done the dark and the medium. Oh, that'll be nice you'll be with your granddaughter. Well, you don't worry one bit because you can always watch it once, you you know, you have a moment. That's what I love about YouTube. Bless them for leaving. I think I can move to a slightly. So I'm going to tilt this paint tray just a little bit so I will remember. Don't use the medium. Use the light. But now you got to see how I took the limited colors I had and turned them into a dark and a medium and a light. So you feel free anytime that you're working with this. As long as you add the liquid medium, textile medium to it, you can use any colors to mix in. And any acrylics work with the textile medium. And then you heat set after it's completely dry, but you have to lay a cloth on top. And then you just take your hot iron and just set it down. Then move it, set it down, move it. You don't, I'm not going to rub scrub iron. I'm just going to press the heat to make sure that the color is set. So I can't wait to do more of these. Now I'm wondering, oh, will I do another mandala or will... You know, what do I want to do? But isn't this fun? Oh, yeah. Oh, great. Okay, now. So I just have to do this one more area. So I'm trying to decide about going to the Myrtle Beach quilt party. Oh, and then I'll come back again to our next project. I'm sorry, I'm jumping around tonight. 
But I did call the teacher for the class and told her that I am very afraid of catching COVID. And so, because Mark and I were talking about it, I said, you know, I won't even, I need a haircut badly, but I won't even go get a haircut because right now our county is having the highest infection rate of the entire pandemic. So I thought, oh, do I go? I'm, I'm, I'm nervous about it. So then we were talking and he said, well, I hate to see you miss out on it. You've already paid for it. And, and it was going to be nice to go have my own hotel room and be able to get away from home because I've been stuck at home almost the whole time, two years, except for just the brief things. But I talked to the teacher and I said, I'm thinking of sewing in my hotel room. And then, and, and it's adjoining, you know, it's right there. I'm thinking of sewing in the hotel room and then coming down to the class anytime that she's doing new teaching. And she said, sure. And she said, I can give her my cell phone number and then she can let me know when she's getting ready to do teach some more basic skills. And I'm, that really makes me feel good. I talked to Mark about it, and, and he said he thinks that would be safer because, you know, I'll double mask during that time, go in, stay away from everybody. Oh, I know. See, that's it. It's going through everyone. And I even read an article that says, well, since it's inevitable that we'll all catch it, should you go ahead and just catch it and get it over with? They said no. And they gave four reasons. And one of them I've already forgotten. But basically it said, right now hospitals are full and stressed. Not a good time if you get sick and have complications. Number two, um, not everyone has a good outcome. And are you? do you want to test that before you absolutely have to? Number three is they're developing therapeutics, medicines. They're working hard and fast to develop uh, medications that, like when I had shingles, I, I took an antiviral that really helped. So they said, try to hold it off if you can, because for those three reasons, and there's one more, and I forgot what the reason was. But anyway, ugh, so... I'm, I don't want to sit in the classroom with a double mask on, but I will do that to go down and listen for the instructions. Then I can come back up in the safety of my room, and I'm staying there by myself, and I'm not going to have any housekeeping at all, anything. So it's going to be my little sanctuary. And uh, so that's what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to miss going to some of the activities. I told Mark they have a banquet the last night. Well, you go sit at a table full of people and everybody takes their masks off. I said, I'll go down my double mask and I'll get my plate of food and then I'll bring it back to the hotel room. And I'll miss the fun, but I just can't take the chance. It's not worth it, you know. So, but let us, Carol, keep us posted how your daughter and your two granddaughters are doing. Please let us know. And because, you know, we, we are not over this yet. And um, we still are having a few people a day in our little county, a few people um, dying. So I want to be careful. So anyway, now let me show you this. See what you think. If that gave me enough contrast, I'm hoping I might have to lighten the light just a little bit more. What do you think? So now that I made up all that paint, even when I say goodbye tonight, I've got to go finish painting it because I don't want to waste that paint <laughs> when I get the mix just right. 
Oh, Cheryl, hi, sweetheart. It is so good to see you. It is so good to see you. So, okay. So what, now I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing a show next week. I may have to skip, but I'll see. I'm not going to put, uh, you, if, if, it, if I decide to do it, I'll put it up. I'll put a notice up close to the time. But uh, the next the next color, and uh, let me get you, I'm sorry, I didn't even show you. This is what I'm working off of. I went into paint and did a mock-up, and I'm still going to change this around the edge, but I did a, I did a mock-up. I'm, I'm good through, all the way through the purple and yellow, but I think I'm going to change this. But I love that light, light teal behind the green leaves. I think that just really is so bright. And, oh, it's fun. I'm having a blast. And it's just peaceful and easy. And, you know, have yourself some tiny brushes. Um, yeah, the whole, the, this event that I'm going to, you don't even have to show that you've been vaccinated. And, you know, if I'd known this Omicron was coming, I wouldn't have even signed up for it. When I went to my retreat in November, we didn't have Omicron and we had to prove that we were vaccinated. So what do you do? What do you do? Okay. So anyway, but I figured even if I go stay in the hotel, I'm going to take all my food with me and um, I'm going to take a couple projects to work on and I'll set up it in the room and just enjoy myself. I need to get away. <laughs> so anyway, but I think this is going to work out. And don't forget, if go to, let me see, the gentleman, whoops, hold on. Whoops, let me, let me put my glasses on. I always try to pretend I don't need them, I guess, huh? <laughs> and that doesn't work good for me. All right, gentlemen. Whoops, gentlemen, crafter, and lovely man. And if you type in, I think it's Monday Mandala or Mandala Monday. He will have, I know, see, that's what I'm worried about, Cheryl. It has really, you know what, great idea. Because I haven't even eaten dinner yet. So I'll put it, we have these quart size. That will fit perfect in that. And then, thank you. You guys give me such good ideas. You inspire me. You keep me excited. <sighs> Oh, Deborah Donnell is here too. Yay, girlfriend. So let me real quick see if I can find the Gentleman Crafter site because he has agreed for you to use them free. And he just asked he'd like to see what you do with it. So that's pretty darn easy. I'm going to go ahead and go right to the Monday... Mandala. All right. Let me, I am going to copy this and paste it. So all you have to do is click on the link. Now, if it doesn't actually make a link, then just copy the link and paste it in your, okay, copy. Oh, I wanted to do copy as a link. No, it doesn't have that. Okay. All right, let me come back to y'all. I'm a Southerner on a, I just said y'all. <laughs> As if somehow I've been hiding it from you. <laughs> okay, paste. There we go. And there. There is the link for Gentleman, cra gentleman crafter, crafter. And please always share, hey, I got, I got your site from Our Time to Quilt. Thank you. You know, let them know. There are some very generous, generous people on the Internet. And let me tell you what, 
they make my life more fun, easy, more exciting. So you can look through all of his mandalas, print it down, and use it. And figure out if you want. I enlarged mine some. And uh, I'm trying to decide if I want to make little wall hangings. Do I want to make little pillows? But I'm having so much fun. I'm going to make a bunch. And then that way I'll have gifts. If somebody does something really special for me, I'll give them one of them. Because there's just so much fun. And just a little bit of backing and a little scrap of batting and a little bit of white fabric or black fab. Ooh, I think I'm going to use black fabric for my next one. Wouldn't that be pretty? All right, guys. Um, so just real quick, what do you think about us doing a snowy landscape? It's the time of year. And I can give you some hints and tips on how to make snow look real. Would you like to do that? <laughs> you're so cute, Marsha. Oh, you're so sweet, Marsha. I'll have to show you a painting I started 10 years ago that I haven't finished. But I started it. <laughs> so, but do you think you might like a snow scene? If you want, um, I can design one for you and have it free sent. Sh shoot it to you by email. Oh, yay. Oh. God, okay, I will check out Helen Godden Quilts for sure. Okay, I know you probably have a long project list, but I like doing these shows because even if you don't have time to do it right now, if, if I put this show out there, then when you do, you can come back and watch it. See? I'm thinking about this stuff. So that's why you probably think, I can't keep up with all the stuff she's doing. What I'm doing is introducing an idea, a thought, a process, how to. And then when you want it, you come back and find it and it's yours. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to definitely, Carol, y'all want to check out Helen Godden too, because Carol's got some real good referrals. She knows the people. Don't forget this Saturday morning on YouTube. And I'm pretty sure that she put her, um, I'm pretty sure, yes. If you go up there, it's YouTube forward slash C forward slash The Magical Touch. And you will see her doing her beautiful journal um, now I just forgot what the word is. Um, you wrap it around. Oh, Carol, my brain. I told you it had been a long day. <laughs> but, you know, some people, and I've been looking to see about getting, you know, maybe getting some more of these because you can then wrap them around, you know, what are they called? Journal scroll. Thank you, Miss Carol. But you can figure out any interesting thing you'd like to wrap the scroll around. Maybe you can get a dowel rod or just something, you know, whatever, you, you know, or just wrap it around itself. But they're a lot of fun. And I love looking at Carol's because it gives me, like, she put a little needle in one of them, like, you know, vaccination and all the different things that are going on in her life. And I think it's really cool. So she's willing to share the, her beautiful talent with you. We got some good people on YouTube. All right, everybody. I'm exhausted. I'm worn out. I got nothing left. Any last minute questions? But thank you for all of you who come to this. And uh, and I'm not sure if I'll be have one up next Thursday or if I might wait. I'll see. But you... I'll put it, I'll put up the notice when I'm sure whether I'm going to do it or not. So thank you to everyone. You are the best. And uh, check out Miss Carol. And then after you see Miss Carol's Saturday YouTube video about the scroll, then we're going to do a Jitsi. So if you're a member of our group, 
please just go on the group. And I think it's like 12 to 4. Miss Susan's back. She's going to be there with it. And then real quick, um, if you're not yet a member of our group, but you'd like to try on a Jitsi, then just send me an email at our time to quilt at key, whoops, put the glasses on, Deb, TWC, whoops, oh gosh, TWC.com. All right, so shoot me an email and I'll send you the link, okay? Well, everybody, you're great. Cheryl Lemon, it's so wonderful to see you. It's so great to see all of you. And now you've got a lot of exciting things to look forward to. All right. Take good care. Take good care of yourself because you can't take care of other people until you've taken care of yourself. Make sure you hunker down for the snowstorm if you're in the path. Bye-bye, guys. Mwah. So good to see all of you. Mwah. Yeah, we're having Jitsi this, this Saturday and next Saturday. All right. Bye-bye, guys. See you later. You're the best.